So we want to get... Oh, there's already a bunch more guys than I thought coming up this road. Now, oh, that's an 80-point unit. Oh, that's ATGMs. Okay, that's... An, oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Run the other way. These Ethan Dards are going to bomb really good, though. These Scorpions are probably not going to feel so good. That's a, lot, a bit of a shame, but... It's fine, because we can bomb the bridge as they're just standing here. Run, Humvees, run! Oh, they're missing them, and those bombs are going to hurt a lot. Yep. That is awesome. All right, howdy, boyos. Welcome back to more Wargame Red Dragon. There was a little bit of a delay there between the last episode and this episode, and it's really because I was just not looking forward to doing the naval battle. As you may or may not know, I just am a complete not fan of naval battles in Red Dragon. I really like those ones where you have uh, fleets come in, for example, here in Sanshan, that battle we did, or in Tanshan, or hell, even the battle for uh, Qingdao, which I really enjoyed, where you have naval forces, air forces, and ground forces all working together, including amphibious ones. That's really cool. Having just pure ship v ship combat isn't necessarily my favorite. Isn't much we can do about that. It's not like I can, well, I could technically just click auto-resolve, but the comment section might not be a fan of that. I have a couple of plans, and I might as well run through at least the basic one. We're going to fight the naval battle. Uh, likely will not be able to destroy all six of their capital ships right away, but if we can, great. If not, it's not a big issue. But at least this battle will be over relatively quick. I'm going to move all of my forces from Tanshan to Kilju and will be engaging the Soviets in some really tough land combat here. Um, not even forgetting the fact that they have really good fighters up as well. And then we're going to be tricking the Chinese. And if there's any North Koreans left in here, let's take a look. It looks like it's just purely, yeah, it's just purely Chinese people um, in this one. They're going to probably attack Pyongyang, but I have a secret weapon. But we'll find out about that in a minute. So first of all, I just, I wish that the boat game was kept to only available. Like It's like, you know how there isn't like a strict air versus air combat game mode? I kind of, you know, there isn't like a only spawn planes like ace combat style kind of thing yeah i personally feel like that would have been really good for this game uh to not have pure boat gameplay but hey what can i do about it really nothing so you know as, as we as we move towards uh trying to obviously finish this campaign so we can play the one and the only um uh, ash and shadows mod that i think everyone at this point is just so freaking excited for and it just, it seems like people are really uh, forgetful. I've been talking about wanting to play that for forever. Uh, but still people are like, oh, are you going to play Ash and Shadows? I'm like, no, I'm just uh, never going <laughs> to. No, of course I am. It's still very much in in the books. Just wait. Okay, there we go. You just got to give me a little bit. Because uh, as of right now, I can't quit this game or I can't install it. Because if I do install it right now, I will lose all the progress in this campaign. And I feel like I've said that so many times now, so I'm just done saying it. But just in case you're wondering, or you're even already writing, like, where is my, um, <laughs> where is my Ash and Shadows? It, it's coming. Trust me. It really, it really is. So the main takeaway for this particular battle is that we are going to use our Tram Intruders, obviously to a great degree. Um, I'm not using the Prowlers this time because, well, they're A, they're occupied, and uh, B, I, oh, this is a little risky here. Okay, hopefully they can get out, hopefully they can get out. Oh, that's a lot of fire. We didn't destroy that Udaloi, and my intruders got out. Okay, good. So, where was I? Right, I'm not using the Prowlers because, well, we learned that they can shoot their missiles straight through... Uh, the enemy air defenses, but they have to get close enough to these Udalois and Sovermenis where they're kind of like a free target and it's not really worth it because every missile only does like one or two damage. So it's not really worth it for me to waste uh, all those uh, planes and, and hopefully get away with a win, um, which we're not. We're, we won't be able to. 
Um, now, we also don't have the Tomcats on station uh, because the Tomcats are currently on land. Um, I believe they're above Tan Shan, uh, the uh, naval invasion we did last battle. But we still have these awesome Super Hornets, which are not the ones with the Mavericks. Okay, well, they only did one damage. That's a little lame. They're not the ones with the Mavericks. But they still have some uh, some Amrams and some anti-ship missiles, which is the main reason I'm bringing them. Uh, we're going to have the Super Horn and just knock out this KA-27 here, probably. Actually, let's just dis- Ooh, this is already risky, 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 risky. Ooh, we're just out of range of that. That's good. Let's call in that last Hornet. And then once we've called it in, we are going to start calling in ships. Uh, mostly probably Hatsuyukis, because they're a little better than the OHPs. They have a little bit more strength, a little bit better uh, optics, seaways, etc., etc. Um, okay, the Udaloi is currently engaging. Let's move the Champsarai down a little bit. Get a Super Hornet. Okay, I don't. I accidentally fired the missiles at this Udaloi. It wasn't my intention. It goes at KA-27. That's good. Congo just destroyed that. Another helicopter. Hopefully in range of one of my ships. We'll get a Muna, which is just a stolen supply ship. We're going to play this very carefully here. I don't know if we... Okay, we're just out of range. Okay, come on. Stop the bullying. Okay. So hopefully if all of our planes are reloaded... We can do a massive attack run on this Udaloi, which just has 300 strength, which is like insane. That's more than any Blue Force ship, which again, so the, the Red Four are really strong on the water. Uh, they're, they're just absolutely nuts. Let's get this Champ Sarai out of here. I don't want to lose it for no reason. Looks like all of our jets are ready. So we'll just get an entire attack wave to come in okay we'll move away here oh this is gonna be great look at this that's like 16 that's like 20 22 missiles coming in on this Udaloi it's not gonna survive the wave of just missiles coming at it perfect job and we didn't even lose any of our planes and one of them even went veteran actually it looks like we have four veteran super hornets and at least two hard intruders a veteran and an elite which is awesome Move the Muna down here, and uh, we'll just start repairing. Hatsayuki on the other side here. Don't really have the option to go and sit in here. Um, Udaloi is not being repaired, which is good for us. So we knocked one of them down. They only had six, so we know there's one here. Well, Udaloi's and uh, Sovermenis. I think, wait, was that an Udaloi we just killed? I think it wasn't a Sovermeni. Or it might have been. I should have probably paid attention. It doesn't really matter. They only have like a, they only have four Udaloys and two Sour Mini, so they have one less. That's what matters. But perhaps we'll aim. Uh, let's get some of our helicopters out. Helicopters. I'm not using them to engage. Their missiles are not good enough. Um, especially not. They're they're all right against the unprotected ships or even the Talon tools, perhaps. But they're not very good against the Udaloys. I'm not using him for that. Oh, here's a Sovereign Mini. Hey, no, no, I'm thinking it might have been a Sovereign Mini I killed. No, it wasn't Udaloi. It doesn't really matter. It's basically the same ship to me. Um, there's some slight differences, but the main thing that you need to know is that they both are really hard to kill. I guess the Sovereign Mini actually has less strength than the Udaloi. So we did kill one of their four Udaloi's, which is good. But I'm using them purely as recon. Because if I send a ship out ship gets engaged by an enemy ship and it's going to get shot down or destroyed now these can fly a little bit further away outside of their missile range and not have to worry um, about being engaged from from very far away so hopefully our muna well technically it's their muna but it's one we stole from the soviets or maybe one of the chinese fleets over here in a previous battle so we're just uh, using them right now for our uh, our own good as we're healing and repairing all of our stuff. And then I think, okay, well, the Silver Mini is actually making me go for him. I was going to go for one of these just to knock out some of their sea power. But if we can just knock out all of their capital ships, that's totally fine with me. We'll just have to wait. We'll just speed forward for a little bit, get all of these guys to be reloaded. 
naval battles in war game aren't um, the most exciting uh, this is another reason where it's very slow it's not about speed it's just about getting your uh, getting your stuff in order so let's get all of these guys selected attack and let's watch the airwave come in so this should be six missiles plus 16 see we got 22 missiles coming out okay there we go and he is already dead before I think any of the Tram Intruder missiles hit him. That is... That's, that's nuts. Alright, so you know what that means. We go back to very fast and we wait for our planes to be reloaded. We have the naval superiority in just pure numbers. Hell, 14 Hatsuyukis is which what I have. 14 Hatsuyukis, 11 OHPs. That alone could probably uh, overtake any of these ships, but it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. And then some of these ships, like the Beku here, it's, I don't even know what it's doing here. It's so bad. It's it's all right against aircraft, but outside of that, there's no need to use it. It's it's, it's stupid. So um, I'm sitting here wondering, okay, well, it's going to waste a couple of missiles, which is fine. It wastes maybe some ammo on trying to shoot these missiles down. Um, yeah, I just always feel kind of like, eh, it's only like two or three ships are really worth it. In this case, uh, maybe what we could consider is getting some Pegasus, because these are actually probably the best ones that I can use. Um, but they're coming at me from multiple sides now. So why don't we get two, four, six, eight, ten? We'll just get ten. Screw it. Who cares? No, let's get eight. And then we can get a Hatsayuki to cover it with them with Seawiz. And then, oh, okay, that's it. Attacking the Pegasus already. Is it going to have range on that? Oh, get out of here, bud. Is it going to spawn kill all of my ships that I'm spawning? Let's cancel all of these. Well, good on them. That's uh, See, that's why I prefer to use... Oh, here is... Okay, I need to knock these out. We only have one Super Hornet. But if we can not... Oh, that's one down. No, please die before it missiles me. They only had two. They only had two. Tell me it's not going to get away. Nice. Okay, so the Super Hornet is repairing now, which is kind of a downside. Oh, there goes my SH-60. Very annoying, but can't stop that from happening. Uh, so yeah, now obviously, clearly, I have to spawn these Hatsuyukis down to deal with the Sover Menis, uh obvious meme on us there. Uh, maybe we could spawn a Tram Intruders here. Have them engage the Sover Mini while it's busy trying to engage the Hatsuyuki. I don't think the Nanushka is a huge issue for us. 16 missiles should still be a lot of firepower coming out. Okay, it knocked out... Okay, crap. It actually knocked out two of my Tram Intruders as they were turning. So, what happened there? It looks like one exploded... And that caused the other one to explode. So we just lost two Tram Intruders, which is mostly annoying because I'm losing ones that are very well trained. But this is the last naval battle, so it's not a huge issue. Oh, we want to just watch out here. So another Nanushka probably gets destroyed here if really two of these Hatsuyukis try their best. Um, we'll get these two Super Hornets to engage this Nanushka, as it's actually already... Hold, hold fire on that. Well, it's going to be dead anyway. Missiles might not even get it from the... Well, they did. It's all right. Uh, we're kind of wasting our time here because I want to get one, two, three, four, five. I want to get all of these Pegasus because I've kind of really come around on these guys. They have really uh, shown me that they're actually worth bringing. Uh, before, didn't really see it that way, but now I've really come around on, on those particularly. And the Pegasuses, Pegasuses, the Pegasi are actually worth bringing, I think. Now, I don't think it's worth you shooting your stupid missile at this guy. Uh, where did this... Where's Hatsuyuki not coming this way? All right, here we go. But the Pegasuses, or Pegasi, they have a bunch of these harpoons. They're long range, which is the most thing, that really important thing that matters. They have a lot of them. The thing is that they have to get super close, relatively speaking. They have to get within range of the Udaloi. I'm not sure about the Silver Minis, but they have to get in range of those Udaloi who actually fire their missiles, which... Uh, is, I guess, a little bit of an issue. Uh, but if, if you're willing to lose one or two of them, it's all right. It's not great. I mean, you're kind of sacrificing these people without them 
or perhaps being aware of it, but if we can get eight of them within range of an Udaloi, we'll lose and we'll spread them out and then we'll move them forward into his range. He'll start engaging. He'll probably lose one or two, but by the time that he knocks out um, all eight of these Pegasi, I will have had many chances of knocking him out, uh, which obviously will be a, a success. Well, let's knock out this Nanushka. I think we really... Okay, well... Mm, didn't really fire at the same time. Oh, that might be good. A 120 points. I don't know if we can knock out this KA60. We did, however, knock out only the only two planes they had in this fleet, which is perfect for us. Strafing run with the main gun. Yep, because those AMRAMs are not capable of engaging uh, engaging helicopters. Let's turn around, go for a double missile on this Teton tool. It's probably not going to do anything. Uloi might even intercept it. Ooh, they, wait a second. That was a hit. It didn't seem to care, though. That's a little annoying. All right, well, let's send two of our tram intruders. This one's still really damaged. That's good. We could try something here. We'll call both of them in. We'll engage the Muna and... The tunnel tool. The Muna is more of a free kill. We don't even have to really worry about it, but it'd be nice to just get 120 extra points. So missiles away. And that Muna is going to be gone in like one more hit. And the Tutton tool survives. It's kind of annoying. Maybe I should have gone for the double hit on that Tutton tool. But Muna has gone. Udaloy is still really low health. Uh, they only have a couple minutes left in this battle, however. Now, the way to deal with enemy ships knocking out your Pegasi is very simple. What do you do? You cover them with some Sea Whiz aircraft. So that's where... Or, I guess they're boats. I don't know why I said aircraft. I was looking at this, and then I said aircraft. Uh, you cover them with some Sea Whiz ships. So let's take a look where the Sea Whiz is on this ship. I swear it's always the delivery people that show up when I'm playing war game. Where was I? Right, the Sea Whiz. I'm not really sure where it is on this ship. Oh, there it is. It's in the middle. So we kind of want to... Oh, there's two of them, actually. One on each side. That's awesome. So we can just uh, have it sideways on like that. And that should hopefully cover us. And then we'll push these in fast. Okay, Hatsuki got hit there. That's kind of bad. Let's knock out this Tutton tool with our Super Hornets. And we have to hurry up here. Okay, all of our Pegasi are in range. We got another Hatsuki hit, but look at this. This is what we mean. Eight missiles. Sixteen missiles are coming out. Hatsuki's gone. It's a risk we're taking. Ton of tools, however, down. A bunch of missiles missing this Udaloi, which is just horrible. But look at the spam. Look at the amount of rockets we are bringing out. I'm even calling this a victory already before we've even destroyed it. Okay, maybe I should... Oh, no, no, we're, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Ooh, that was a bit risky on my end. I almost threw away my, <laughs> my other Hatsuyuki there. So we'll put all of these Pegasi over there. So we lost a Hatsuyuki, not the best, but losing a single Hatsuyuki to kill two of their ships. The Hatsuyuki is only worth like 250, and they lost 620 points worth of stuff there, and all my Pegasi are alive. Because you could see, even with 16... Wait, how many rockets did they fire? So they each fired four rockets. So we fired 32 rockets. It took 32 rockets, because their accuracy is so bad, and their power is also relatively low. It took 32 rockets to knock out that ship, which, granted, is like the best ship in the game health-wise, so that's why it took so much time. Now, if we can, I would love to have our Hornets engage the Taran Tool. That way, it should not have... Um, it will not interfere with our Tram Intruders engaging the Udaloi, and it'll still give us a little bit of time to hopefully knock out one more ship, but we've done an amazing amount of damage to them here today, which is what really is important. Tram Intruders engaged Udaloi. Super Hornets, you engaged a Tutton Tool. I don't know if we can maybe... Yeah, why not? Why don't we see what happens here? All three of them on the Tutton Tool. Three, two, one, misses away. So that's six rockets out. Hopefully only two of the hit, I think, to destroy it. Oh, really? One health. 
Okay, try intruders. That's a lot of rockets coming in. Hopefully it doesn't instantly destroy my guys. Oh, really? Okay. So, issue is that two and two tram intruders by themselves isn't enough to cause significant damage, sadly enough, to, um, oh, that sucks, to their air defenses. So, hopefully, we can get enough of these champs arise to move north to cover... These Pegasi, I would love to destroy this one Udaloid that has like a single hit left in it. Well, not a single, but we need to hit it. Um, Hatsuyuki, why don't you move here? Actually, that might be risky. Let's let's just hold moving these guys. Okay, we have 45 seconds. Pegasi. They all have to move. The thing is, these guys are pretty fast. 38 knots, a lot faster than most ships, I believe. So it's good. It's because they're like those, I think they're hydrofoils. That's the name of these things, right? They're not even like into water. They're like, I don't even know how these things work. I think there's like propellers underneath those sticks. Honestly, I don't even know. I'm sure this is what I love. I'll mention this. And then someone in the comment section who's way smarter than I am will tell me how this works. We are so far away from hitting it. Pegasi, 12 seconds. At this point, I think we're just throwing away a bunch of lives because they're probably going to destroy a Pegasus and the missiles aren't going to reach it in time. This is super annoying. If only I moved them like a second earlier, man. <sighs> Damn it. I don't know if we're going to... No, we haven't even destroyed that fleet. They did lose everything. It's a shame they didn't lose that third Udaloid. That would have been really disastrous for them. But yeah, really, we didn't lose much. Those Trime Intruders, those suck. Those really hurt. Um, but we just knocked out four of their six capital ships. It, there's also really no nothing important about this fleet. We don't get any bonus points or anything. Um, the only thing is we can't replenish these tram intruders as long as they're inside this naval sector. What I could do is move these out, and then the tram intruders will come with them, and then heal them and send them back. Uh, we still have to deal with... Really only two Tutan tools and two Udaloids, which we could deal with just with the air power alone, I think. We still have... Uh, okay, we lose the Congo, too. We still have a bunch of Hatsayuki, so I think we could do that. So next turn, we'll probably move this to Naval Sector Mike. And then we'll do some daily dallying, you'll see. Uh, but for now, we're going to have to, I think, end the turn there. There's really not much for us to do. We did move this unit over here. Yep, so end turn. Now this is going to get where... This is where it's going to go get interesting here in just a second. So they're really doubling down on Pyongyang. And understandable, but this is where I get the F-117s and the new F-15s. And this is where I get to call them in from, right frickin' here. Now, let's call in the F-117s. Let's call in the F-15s. And let's send everyone from Tanshan. This is going to be a couple of big plays here, so I hope you're ready for this. So first, everyone goes here. Then, yeah, people were like, hey, when are you going to use the airborne? Well, I was hoping to get all of the uh, Australians as well, well, all the Commonwealth units, but I can't, sadly enough, they're a little too far away for me because uh, I can't call them in any any closer. Uh, but we're going to do this, and then we could, I guess, maybe we'll call in... Now I need to take a look for one second. Naval forces. These are the rocket guys. I think I want to bring these ones. Yep. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be funny. Enterprise will go here. Um... We'll send you to kill Jew. We'll refit you here. Send you back in. Uh, Black or the Tomcat sent you over there. The Hornet sent you over there. I guess we don't have enough points for the other. Yeah, these Bulldogs. They're not really. They're all right. They're really. They're not super important for what I'm doing. Um, this is just where the big plays are coming out. So I hope that you're still paying attention to what I'm doing. Over here, I've already decided I really only need to keep a very limited amount of units here. Uh, this South Korean unit, the South Korean anti-tank units, and one of these South Korean tank units, because they're all kind of meh. Then we'll send these, because like if you look over here in Taishan, what are we up against? We're up against uh, Zanchi and a couple of anti-air units. 
and a couple of vehicles, literally nothing. They, they have nothing to shoot down my aircraft with. So I'm not going to go super overboard, just a unit of Itendars. And I think perhaps we'll send... I don't know if we send, send the Marines over there. It would not be a bad idea. So Marines can go north too. These three South Koreans can hold the line. Now, we got these new Eagles, which I'm super excited about. And I'm not sure if we want to keep them here. Let's take a look at the enemy air forces, because they send in all of their aircraft here. 19,000 points. That's quite a bit. But the majority of those is really in their tanks, especially their 140-point tanks here and their 80-point tanks. These are, man, just a lot of them. Um, and then their planes, eh, the, the one thing is the Q5Ds. They're expensive, but they have nothing really amazing to show against any, or against my aircraft and their infantry is also just a joke compared to my units so i'm going to take a look i think i have both my kfc 16s and my f-15s here if we go to air there's a lot of units here oh my god almost too many to see anything anymore here's the kfc 16s and here is the eagles i'm thinking what we can do okay first of all Prowler, we need you here to deal with the enemy seed. Issue is, our Harriers... Uh, I don't know if I can... No, I don't think I can make that. No, 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 that would cost way too many points. So this is a unit that has the, had the two seed, but I lost them. So I don't have any seed in Pyongyang. But they only have three ra or anti-radar, or I guess a radar-based anti-aircraft units. Um, Nighthawks, do they have good stealth? Exceptional. I just don't know what that means. I think they're really hard to see until they're actually like right above the target. Now the question is, these eagles are probably the ones who want to send over to kill Ju and not the um, KFC 16s because they can probably deal with the lesser quality units here. But this is really where we need our good units. Now I can't fight and kill Ju right now because I don't think all of my units, unless no, see, not all of my units are on station. Uh, this armor regiment, well, that's just one. Okay, I might... Yeah, see, I'm not, I don't have two of my armor regiments, which is an issue because they have... Da, 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 yeah, where do all those points come from? They have a bunch of really good tanks. Like, look at that. 2,475 and 170 point units. 2,485 point tanks. And their AA here is four Tunguskas, six bucks... A couple of Panjays and then some shittier anti-aircraft units. So this is, well, their infantry here is garbage. It's just their armor is is nuts here. Now we also have eyes on what even what is in Shangjin, which is more armor in the form of these T64 BVs. And we have, I think these are the good, yeah, these are the annoying artillery. Hey, look at how many. There's 26 artillery units in here. We do not want them to give them the chance to move in to kill Ju and be available. So we're actually going to probably have to fight Kilju without the K1As and the K1s. I believe one of these units has some Abrams in here. But which one is it? I remember one of these might have had it. But now I can't seem to find them. Here it is. Oh, well, we have eight of them. That's eight. And they have 24 tanks that are actually more insane than my Abrams. So we're going to have to do some messing around here, but we do have air superiority. We have seed. They have no aircraft. We can rely purely on our prowlers. I did send my eagles and my tomcats here because they're not needed on the sea. I don't think I need them over Pyongyang because they their, their planes aren't good and they have good AA over there. And Taishan doesn't have any enemy aircraft. John Sean has aircraft, but I don't need to worry about that because I'm not attacking that right now. And if I do not destroy them and kill Ju in this turn, which will be very unlikely for me to be able to do so, they are going to send their planes over here. And that's when I need the F-15s. That's when I need the Tomcats. So they're kind of there as a preemptive move. Now the question is, why did I do this? If I fight the battle of Taishan and I don't lose, which is basically impossible when you look at what this is, we can then eliminate the units in Pyongyang and they have nowhere to run. So technically speaking, their uh, aircraft will make it out of Pyongyang, 
but nothing else will, which would destroy like 15,000 points in one blow, which would be fantastic if we manage to get a total victory, obviously, uh, in Pyongyang. But first, this battle will set up all of our paratrooper units, and they're going to be backed up by uh, our French bombers and our British helicopters, and then we'll be right back. All right, kind of a crazy setup. I really want to get the extra points I get from this zone, so I've really set up a bunch of good infantry and ATGMs and Alpha, because it's plus four points. And then I have covered to Pyongyang with a bunch of my Scorpion 90s who are going to be covering the only, well, real two approaches with two Lynxes as backup. I'm going to start this one on very slow because I do need a little bit of time to get all of my stuff sorted here. These Unimogs and Humvees I don't want to keep around there because they're just running the time or the risk of getting destroyed. These Scorpions will move forward as well as these scorpions here with the LRPV vehicle. And this one has an awesome Mark 19 on it. So personally, I'm a really big fan of that. And then I guess we can have two scorpions here. As laugh stays here, links and here and here. And then we can just go to normal. And our E-10Dars will become our sort of fast moving bombing forces. And we're going to be using a lot of them, probably. So we want to get... Oh, there's already a bunch more guys than I thought coming up this road. Now, oh, that's an 80-point unit. Oh, that's ATGMs. Okay, that's... An, oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Run the other way. These Ethan Dards are going to bomb really good, though. These Scorpions are probably not going to feel so good. That's a, lot, a bit of a shame, but... It's fine, because we can bomb the bridge as they're just standing here. Run, Humvees, run! Oh, they're missing them, and those bombs are going to hurt a lot. Yep. That is awesome. Lynx, deal with those units. And we'll run these guys out of there. It looks like everyone basically spawned on this bridge. This is just brutal. So we did lose a bunch of our scorpions. Can't really do much about that. Those Etendars just destroyed everything that I was afraid of. Our Scorpions are able to destroy their ATGMs because these are the 80 and 50 point like high quality enemy ATGM vehicles that I was a little afraid of. But it looks like, you know, if they're all going to get bombed, then it's all fine. MI-8, if it does dis deploy its units, okay, it's trying to drop rockets on my Scorpions, but it's not going to live very long, I don't think. Okay, come on, 20 millimeter. Please. Perfect, thank you. Move you down the road. Wow, we just uh, destroyed those guys so bad they don't even want to move across the bridge anymore. Worst part is that, um, well, you know, <laughs> the bridge is now almost blocked. So they're going to get across. is going to be very hard. And we can just get these very cheap and very basic Eton Dars, which are like from the freaking 60s. I was about to say, just get across here, get them bombing. And that is, uh, yep, very, very effective even though they're from the 19th. No, why are... I really thought you guys were going to be a little bit less stupid than this. Maybe we'll just put you in the tree line over here because you guys are going to get blown up if you keep going like this. Okay, get some more of these Lynx 20 mils together with this one. Eaton Dars. I didn't have eyes on that second time there. Doesn't really matter. We'll just keep bombing very happily to do so. Okay, and then we can probably get these Lynxes all together. Move up our LRPV, Parenti. Try and get eyes on. Our Ethan Dards are just having a great time right now. Oh, that's a lot of people. Let's not use the Lynxes for no reason. They have really come across the river here. Okay, start engaging. Get our one Lynx back to base, back to the FOB. Our LRPVs drop in Mark 19 rounds. We got all the Etendar bombing runs coming in. That's freaking awesome. They're very small bombs, but still effective at stunning the enemy, which is really what I'm looking for here. Uh, try and see if we can get a bombing run to intercept these ZSD APCs. Wow, our LRPV is just blasting these people. Here comes our Etendar. Running low on ammo here. Okay, repairing. This thing is, it's just a Jeep. I'm surprised it's still alive, to be honest. All of our Lynxes are out of ammo. Uh-oh. Okay, let's get this thing back if we can. Roll up to the front here. 
we might need to get some more of these LRPVs. I think they'll be okay if we light them up like that. There'll be a little bit of a, a massive sort of countermeasure to their uh, units coming in. More of these WZ-550, which I think is the 80-point units. Okay, all of our lynxes are landing. Etendars. Perfect. As long as we stun them. Oh, that's a scorpion down. Yeah, that's all right. They've almost lost this battle, point-wise. WZ-550s, they're going to knock out my LRPVs, which are still 50 points, by the way. It's that Mark 19 on them that really, uh, really impacts their price, I think. Let's get our lynxes up in the air and running. Oh, WZ-550, you're not supposed to do that. You're running right into the Mark 19, buddy. Okay. Lynxes, engage. Oh, this is a glorious. Look at this. Automatic grenade launcher times four, and the 20 mils from the lynxes is coming in as well. If we can uh, hopefully get rid of all of their stuff. I actually am surprised by how much stuff they still had. Okay. Let's Q move. Because we didn't lose any of those units. So we only really lost like uh, five or so scorpions, which is really nothing in a great scheme, greater scheme of things when you think about what happened here today. Okay, bomb this, bomb this. The FOP might be like right back here. Okay, let's keep Q moving up. Let's get these Lynxes to go back to base. Oh, you're stuck in the mud. That's all right. And that's another bunch of points. Q move. I'm hoping we can engage the ZSD that's in the river. What are some more Zanchi? I mean, really, these things are have no armor, do they? They have zero armor. So, I mean, if they get spotted by anything, they're gone. But then the Mark 19s are nuts. Itendar, can he get his bombs off? No. Hold, hold, hold. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, this thing. This is... Oh, my God, hit him! Mark 19! How is it not doing more damage? Okay, the Mark 19s are a lot more effective than I legit thought. That is awesome. Okay, we need to be careful here. I don't want to lose all of these guys for no reason, but we just cleared out the sector here, I think. Let's bomb this tree line just because we can. That sounds very Vietnam era of me. Actually, let's not bomb that. We don't know if there's the AA over there. They still have some light AA units. Uh, let's get a Lynx to cover this cap. And then I don't think we have a... Oh, we do have a Chinook. Perfect. Okay, Lynx, get out of here. Shame I don't have any helicopter recon, but that's totally fine. Now might be a good time for these guys to get over here and uh, drive back, just so we can keep them safe. And the fact that we're getting these plus four points from Alpha, almost doubling our points from five to nine is just perfect. So the Chinook will land behind these LRPVs and drop them some fuel and ammo and much needed repairs. In the meantime, we'll send our lynxes over here, and I guess we could potentially just carpet bomb this to smithereens with our five Eaton darts that are currently not reloading. And hopefully, you know, a random bomb hits a CV. Let's find out, though. There's something very cool about these Eaton darts, even though they're from the freaking 60s. They're, they're awesome. I mean, these things are great. Look, there's an elite. There's another elite, and there's four, uh, four veteran, I think. They're not taking any fire either, which is good. So there is no AA so far. Okay, we've got well, a couple of areas we might have missed. So got this area secure now at least, so that's good. That means we can now go look. Chinook, you can go back to the fob. Itendar, bombs away. Well, since there's no iglas coming out and no missiles, I think our lynxes can just Q-move into this area. We might even take a big ball move here and already dispatch a Lynx CV to this area while our LRPP, LRPVs are moving in here. Lynxes. Oh, actually, we should F move these guys because they're going to be slow. Oh, here it is. Look at that. It's just a single CV unit with a little APC. Well, that's a little brutal. We're going to just uh, burt that out of existence. This is so, so very brutal, but very effective. And then I think we just have to spot whatever is in two cent. There's still three CVs in the play. We just only need to kill another, like, 
well, really only like one one or two units, like an APC and the infantry inside, and then we're pretty much done point-wise. I'm hoping that, uh, well, so we had eight scorpions, we lost four. A pretty, pretty heroic sacrifice on their part. I forgot they had all those good eight EGMs, so kind of on me there. Okay, there's a fob. We can just bomb the fob and call it a day. So why don't we just do that? And then for good measure... Um... We'll just bomb the area around the fob, and then our other three planes will bomb the actual fob, which should probably knock this out. Are they gonna get bombed? Or no, actually, they're not gonna get well bombed. I mean, they're not gonna, they're not getting shot at by any missiles, so that's good. Okay, just bombing some extra areas there. Boom! There was already a couple of trucks next to the fob. Oh, we only knocked. Oh no, we knocked out the infantry regiment, not the anti-tank company. I'm hoping. Oh, okay, it doesn't flee n into China, so that's good because it could have easily repaired. Oh, it's annoying we didn't get all of those. Uh, they're called the BJ-1212. Nice. It's a shame we didn't get all of these uh, HJ-8 guys because they do have good missiles on board. But Taishan is now secure. So when we eventually will do the battle for Pyongyang in the next episode, look at how screwed they are. Okay, one downside. I was really hoping. Okay, there's actually. Okay, I say I say they're screwed. <clears throat> I'm kind of screwed. Look at, they're getting 1,700 starting points. I'm getting 1,200. And they have a secured X-ray, which is annoying because I really would have loved to spawn there to put my guys in the trees. But we're probably going to have to go to Yankee and lock that down or Whiskey. But that'll be in the next episode for now. I hope you guys enjoyed and love to see you in the next episode. Cheers.